Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another session of Edifying the Body. It's good to have you with us today, and I pray that what we talk about today will bless you, edify you, maybe answer some questions that you have. Starting this off, I want to say that I don't claim to be a theologian. I don't claim to be a great scholar, um, but through study, through teaching, and so on and so forth, there's been some things that uh, I've got a, a decent grasp of, and um, so I'm going to do my best to articulate, and if I, um, in teaching this, do not cover an area adequately, or if um, in trying to explain something, I do not deliver it um, the way I intend, then I will do my best to fix that and um, make it more plain and uh, understandable at a later date. But I'm going to do my best today. So before I get into it, uh, starting it off with a testimony, I was preaching at a church a couple of weeks ago, and I, after I got done preaching there, um, there was a lady in the back that they asked me to pray for, and uh, she was an elderly lady, and I went back and I prayed for her in Jesus' name. And I was praying for healing. I told her that I believed that as I prayed for her, and she felt the power of God, that God was going to heal her. I prayed in the name of Jesus. And after service was over, I uh, went to eat with the pastor, the pastor's wife. And it was told me that, um, that she had, uh, after she had walked out of the building, that all of her pain was gone. And God had healed her. And so I believe it. I've seen it many, many times. That God is a healer. And so I want to encourage you to pray the prayer of faith and to realize that it is God that does it. You're just the vessel. So step out and allow God to use you. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, what he had was the good news. He was building faith and he prayed, rise up and walk. He took the man by the hand. He stepped out in faith, and we know that the unction of the Holy Ghost is important, but uh, a lot of it is us being the vessel, being willing to step out, willing to be in that position, allow God to use us, and to realize that it's God that does the work. Um, the pressure on us is to simply be the vessel. The healing process is done by God. So today, we're going to be talking about a sanctified life. Now, the word sanctified or sanctification or uh, to sanctify in its uh, basic form is to make holy or separated unto God to be holy. And so um, it is the process by which something that is not holy is made holy. And... Holy means to be whole. It means to be separated unto God um, and unspotted or untouched by filth, sin, decay, so on and so forth. So it, if, in other words, to sanctify is the process of making something that is dirty clean and to be holy and I realize I'm dumbing this down a little bit, is to be clean by God's standards. Okay? So I realize that that is perhaps oversimplifying. There's more that goes into it. But for the sake of this, we're going to let that be a baseline that we can go off of. And so when we're talking about a sanctified life, but before we talk about a sanctified life, we need to go over some uh, basic understanding of our relationship with God and how sanctification plays a part in our walk with God. So, first of all, a new test in the New Testament or under the New Covenant, we are part of the covenant people of God, and um, covenant. I've mentioned it before, but I need to go over it again. So this will make sense. A covenant is unlike a contract. 
A contract is something that you fulfill the agreements or the terms of the agreement prior to receiving the benefits, majority of the time. Well, a covenant, on the other hand, is different in that a covenant is done in the goodwill policy, that you enter into covenant and receive the benefits of that covenant before the terms have been met. And so, with that said, there were oftentimes stipulations or, no, that's not the correct word. There was a process of entering into covenant. And then once you've entered into that covenant, there were terms of that covenant. And so, one of the covenants we see in the Word of God was between Jacob and Laban. And they made a covenant with each other that they would not cross this line for war. And the, then entering into that covenant, there was uh, the process, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, they ate a meal together. There was a heap of stones that was placed there and uh, a marker. And they left that place in covenant. And there were uh, benefits and the rewards of that covenant were immediately received and there were the stipulations and so on and so forth. There were the, uh, the terms of that covenant were to be continued to work, to be worked upon from that day forward. Probably not the best example, but um, so the idea of covenant is that whenever we enter into covenant with God, we enter into covenant with God, becoming a part of the covenant people of God through what we call the plan of salvation. It is where we, um, we go through the process of the application of the redemptive um, power of God to our life through obedience to the word of God. So that means repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost is the process of us uh, being born into the covenant people of God. In John chapter 3, it talks about that we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. That's entering into the covenant people. That's entering into the covenant with God. That's entering into covenant with God. And so that process happens through repentance, baptism, in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. The Bible talks about it. He says that you got to be born of the water and of the Spirit. Um, and so the born of the water is baptism in Jesus' name. And being born of the Spirit is the receiving of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, which he talks about. Um, the wind bloweth that listeth, you hear the sound thereof. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You hear the sound, the sound is required. Um, that is uh, everyone that is born of the Spirit. Uh, every single person that is born of the Spirit, you will hear the sound. It's, it's necessary, it is required in order for, uh, you're not born of the Spirit unless you hear the sound, the so on and so forth. So that's the process of entering into covenant. And once you are in, to, in covenant with God, then you have the terms of that agreement that you continue to walk in. All right. So we're talking about the, the entering into covenant and what happens within that, the way that we can enter into covenant is because in our previous condition, we were not worthy to enter into covenant with God. That requires redemption. We are in the back of hell's pawn shop and we, the, uh, the, the price on our head was more than we could ever pay. And so nothing you can do can redeem yourself. There's nothing you can do to redeem yourself. The blood of lambs and goats was not adequate and nothing that you can do can make up for the sin in your life. For all the sin and fall short of the glory of God, because of what happened in Adam and Eve, every single person on the face of the earth um, is born with a, born into a sinful nature and will fall short of the glory of God, does fall short of the glory of God. And so there's nothing that you can do to redeem yourself. The process of redemption can solely be done by God, solely be done by the man Christ Jesus. The only perfect sacrifice there is or ever will be, ever was, was Jesus Christ. And so he came and he died and he was the only one that can redeem you. And so he paid the price for your redemption and 
because you cannot pay that price to redeem yourself, you cannot pay that price to save yourself. That can only be done by God. It can only be done by the man Christ Jesus. Because you did not purchase your salvation, you did not purchase your redemption, you did not buy it, you did not earn it, because you did not buy it or you did not earn it, you cannot lose it. Now, I will clarify that statement in just a moment. So stick with me. I'm not talking about once you're saved, you're always saved. But the, the idea is, is that you could not pay the price needed to enter into covenant with God. All right? And so Jesus paid that price. He died for you. He paid the price so that you could do so. And so there is nothing that you can do there's no action that you can do in order to pay the price necessary for your salvation. That price has been paid. And so when you have been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, you've entered into that covenant, you've received that redemption, and there's nothing that can separate you from that redemptive power. Save yourself. Now we're gonna talk about that. So this is the this is the qualifier. You didn't do anything to earn your salvation, so you can't lose your salvation. But you can't abandon your salvation. The idea is this, that whenever you have come into covenant with God, you're living for God, you're walking with God, and that concept has begun, all right? That you don't have to, that if you make a mistake, if you, if you sin, and you're like, oh God, how am I ever going to, make up for this or whatever the case may be, you've got to remember that you did not earn this thing. It was not based upon your good works that you were saved. You were saved by the redemptive power of Jesus. And so as long as you allow the power of God to work in your life, we're about to talk about that, and continue to make you better, to sanctify you, because the process of sanctification is done by both you and God. The process of redemption can only be done by God. But the process of sanctification is done by you and God working together. It's synergistic. So you abandon your salvation when you do not follow the power of God that is leading you in the process of sanctification, of becoming holy. And so if you walk, if you do not obey the spirit of God, follow the word of God and, and allow the work of God to continue to be doing the work of God in you, then you are not fulfilling the terms of the covenant. And eventually, if you do not follow the conviction of the Holy Ghost and the, the power of the Holy Ghost, Eventually, you will find that you walk away from your salvation. You will find yourself abandoning your salvation because this is a walk from point A to point B. You can't do anything to be worthy of walking into this thing. And I, I hope I'm articulating this well. So we do not believe in once saved, always saved. That once you're saved, you can't abandon this thing. But we do believe that your salvation is secure as long as you with all of your heart follow God. Because, and, and you've gone through the plan of salvation. You've gone through that initial process of becoming a part of the covenant people of God. That when you follow that, God will. God will work it through you. That the, that the power of Christ will work in you until the day of his return. I believe that's in Peter. And so, now that we've covered some of the groundwork here, that process of sanctification is the process of walking with God to become who God wants you to become. To become that person that is holy. All right? Now here's, here's, here's a concept. All right? You walk in that process with God. You working with God. The Spirit of God working with you to become that person. Okay? It is the process of the Spirit of God and your obedience to the Spirit of God and the Word of God, working together to become day by day the person God wants you to be. All right? And you are saved all along that process. 
You are saved from day one to day when you die. All right? And that process of, of working within the terms of that covenant, of obeying and becoming better by the word of God, that process of becoming sanctified, of becoming holy through the process of sanctification is our walking and getting closer to God. It is based upon that loving, nurturing relationship. And the Spirit of God, it, it makes there be a desire inside of you to become that person. And there is a danger of abandoning your salvation if you do not follow that process of the Spirit and the Word of God. If you no longer obey, the Bible says rebellion is as, as, is as under the sin of witchcraft. You will find that it is abandoning your salvation if you do not follow the leading of the Spirit of God and the truth of the Word of God. You will find the abandoning of the salvation. And, and there are people that have. Backsliding is possible because it is a person abandoning the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and not following the Word of God delivered to them or and also not obeying the authority that God's placed in their life. Another topic for another day. And so I'm fixing to go to my text. But um, one other aspect of this is that talking about from day one to day 100. So if a person comes in, goes through the plan of salvation, they're baptized in Jesus' name, they're filled with the Holy Ghost. All right? They've been a drug addict. They've, they've been um, a prostitute. You, you name it. Okay? And God's filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. They walk out that door and they're hit by a car. That person is going to go to heaven because they've been saved. They've been saved by the power of God. They've gone through that process, okay? That person has fulfilled all of the terms, uh, or rather they have fulfilled the, the process of entering into covenant. They've entered into covenant with God and they walk out that door and they're hit by a car. They're going to heaven because they've been redeemed and they have walked in the short amount of time that they've had after that process or after that moment of time when it happened, they have walked to the best of their ability. And they are hit by that car. They're going to heaven. Okay? And so that concept is that person was saved. Now let's take the same scenario. That person goes to that process. Okay? And they come out. They walk out that door. And... They go back to the lifestyle that they had before. And they never come back to church. They do not follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. They do not obey the word of God. There is a point when that they have abandoned the salvation that was offered them. And that point we'll talk about another day. But my point is, what I'm talking about, is when you've entered into covenant with God, that redemption process is not something you can do. Because you do not buy it, you do not purchase it, you do not earn it, you can't lose it. You can't lose that. So that takes away a lot of fear a lot of people have that if I don't do something just right, I'm going to hell. It's a process of sanctification. That's something you have to work out with God. I'm talking about that in just a moment. So... Whereas we don't believe in once saved, always saved. We can, we don't believe in eternal security. But we can be secure in the fact that we are redeemed by Jesus. We can be secure in our salvation that the price has been paid that covers our sin. And the blood can cover afresh every mistake that we make. Okay? So I, I, hopefully I have adequately set the groundwork for this. And we're going to talk about sanctification. All right? So, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, of the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. Verse number 2, elect, okay, or chosen, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we see that sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. And so here is the idea. Here's the concept. Sanctification is done by God 
and us working together. It is the spirit of God and our obedience. Biblical faith always requires obedience. Biblical faith, you cannot separate biblical faith from obedience. Rahab, by what she did. Abraham, by what he did. So on and so forth. You read it in James, okay? And so here's the idea that the spirit of God and obedience of man work together in the, pro in, in the process of sanctification to become the person that God wants us to be. It is a process from day one to day two, to day 100, day we die, all right? The last day we have on earth. It is a process of us, of God continuing to work on our spirit to continue to um, work on our condition and continue to separate us unto himself. And so there's a lot of misconceptions about holiness and hold, what are called holiness standards. I am not holy to be saved. If I mess with somebody's theology, good. I am not holy to be saved. I'm holy because I am saved. I'm holy because I'm, I've, I've gone through the process. I'm, I've entered into covenant. I live holy. I live, I live the way I live. I have standards. I have uh, distinctives of holiness in my life, apostolic distinctives in my life because I'm in covenant with God. Because I'm allowing the spirit of God and the word of God to sanctify me, to make me holy. And it's done because of a loving relationship. It's because of what he's done for me. I've entered into this covenant and I want to fulfill the terms of that covenant. That is to obey both the spirit of God and the word of God. To allow the Holy Ghost to guide me and lead me into becoming the best I can be into becoming a disciple, a follower of Jesus to the best of my ability. And so that is how the process of sanctification works. And we are to have a sanctified life. We are to have one that is, uh, that is continually in the process of becoming closer to God and further from sin. To allow the spirit of God the word of God, whether written or the spoken word of God through the preaching where they where they like what's happening now, where they uh, bring the word of God and they they take it and they um, expound, they, they open up the scriptures and bring deeper concepts and principles so that we may better be the people of God, all right? And so um, Obedience is sprinkling the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God of our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope or a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undestroyable, untaintable, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God we can be sure of this thing. We are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So we are kept by the power of God through faith. And so this is, again, this is the idea. Our redemption, our salvation, we didn't earn it, can't lose it. We can't abandon it. We can walk away from it. And this is the idea that... Um, there at the, the Bible talks about in the last days that when there are those that come before the throne of judgment, that they said that we have performed miracles in your name. We've cast out devils in your name, in your name, so on and so forth. And he says, depart from me. I never knew you workers of iniquity. And so this is the idea. Okay. So this is, this is a concept of someone that begun the process and somewhere along the line, abandon their salvation. This is somebody that they were workers of iniquity. So they entered into covenant and somewhere along the line, they abandoned the guiding spirit of God that was leading them and found themselves in a place where that, well, God, I did this and I did that and, and did this and did that, but they did not obey the spirit of God. They didn't obey the word of God. 
That doesn't happen by accident. That doesn't happen by accident. And, and God will pursue you. God will, and, and somewhere along the line, there was a compromise. There was a compromise of the word of God or a compromise in following the word of the spirit of God uh, and obeying the word of God. The Bible talks about Demas has forsaken me. And you may say, well, it doesn't say he backslid. It doesn't say that he went and served the devil. But we, we get that idea because it said, Paul said, Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world. And in another place, Paul talks about it and says, that um, if any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we get the idea, we get the impression, the evidence is there that Demas forsook this faith. He, some, somewhere, some concept through the battle, the struggle that they were going through there, Alexander the coppersmith have been doing them great harm, somewhere in that process that he abandoned his salvation. That's what the evidence speaks of. All right. So again, we're not talking about once saved, always saved, or what is called eternal security. But we can be secure in our salvation in the fact that if we, that once we've entered into covenant, we we can't we can't lose this thing because we didn't earn it. There's no, it wasn't. It's not a moment. Just bam, and everything's gone. A mistake that we make that can just that can um, bust the whole thing. Destroy the whole thing. In order for this thing to be, in order for this thing, put it this way, in order for your salvation to be gone, it must be abandoned. That is a purposeful walking away or a purposeful backsliding. The process of gradually sliding backwards in the walk instead of going forward. And, and there's never, there's never a, there's never an accident without warning signs. I'll put it this way. There's never, a person never backslides without God giving opportunities for repentance or giving warning signs and warning signals and saying, look, there's this, this is wrong and this is wrong. You need to do something about this and calling calls for repentance and moments of conviction that it never happens without those. It can be a gradual process of compromise, compromising on, on, and things and, and, and those compromises seem like there's no big deal. And so the comp compromises become bigger and bigger and bigger and it happens in, a, in such a gradual state that people can find themselves in some big messes before they realize what comp, where the, those small compromises have led them. Okay, so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to create a full picture here. This is, I'm trying to deliver the idea of how important sanctification is and that when you understand this concept, we understand that, that we, we continue to work continue to pray, continue to seek the word of God. And this also brings a great, a greater importance to um, the idea of holiness. I, I, we could talk about the great and wonderful benefits of holiness, uh, holiness of, of mindset, of lifestyle, of dress. There's, there's so many aspects and areas, and that is a part of the process of sanctification, of being made holy. And again, I'm not holiness to be saved, I am holiness because I am saved. I, I, I live the way I do. I, I, I act the way I do. I think the way I do. There are things I, I don't partake of. There are things that I don't allow in my life. There are things that I don't, I don't put myself in certain places, around certain people, doing certain things because of that. So, 2 Thessalonians 2.13 says this, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, Beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief on the truth. So here it is again. Here is the, the concept of sanctification is done by God and by us. It's, it's, it's the synergy. It's, it's synergistic in the fact that, that it is the working together. It's a 
It's a unified effort. Redemption is different. Redemption is done by God alone. But sanctification is a process done by both us and God. It is a process done by the Spirit of God. Again, um, through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Earlier it said obedience. Here it says belief of the truth. Again, biblical faith is a part of obedience. And obedience to what? Obedience to the truth. So the word of God gives us, it shows us the terms of, our, of the covenant. It shows us what we are to be. Be holy for I am holy, saith the Lord. Um, so on and so forth. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. These verses, these scriptures, so on and so forth. And, and so you, you've heard the terms holiness or hell. Well, the idea of holiness or hell is not, I do not holy to be saved. But the reason why it's holiness or hell is because holiness is a part of that process. And if you do not follow that process, then you are going to abandon salvation. And it's part of that process of abandoning salvation. It's the process of backsliding because the Spirit of God always leads us forward in, sanctif in sanctification, always leads us forward to be holy. And, and there's, it's beautiful. I, I can't, I wish I could articulate how beautiful it is, how beautiful of a process and, and the great blessings that it brings. It brings greater moves of God because you will find in the word of God that God moved and, and manifest himself in great ways in places that were sanctified. The spirit of God showed up greater in the temple and in the tabernacle because there were places that were sanctified. They, were, they went through a process of being made holy so the spirit of God could dwell there with power and majesty. And God would manifest himself there when he would not manifest himself in other places. We know God's omnipresent. He's everywhere. We know that, that God's at the supermarket. God, God uh, because he's everywhere, God is at the bar. But God doesn't choose to, to manifest himself at the supermarket or at the bar. At least, except, not except in very, very drastic situations. But God does choose to manifest himself in a congregation of people that have sanctified themselves. And those are the places you will find that he, he manifests himself the greatest and most powerful is in those places. So I'm telling you, the benefits are out of this world. <laughs> heavenly, sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise God. So, wherefore he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which we have taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, hath loved us and hath given us an everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work and, rather, every good word and work. Establish you in every good word and work. And so I could talk about more about the, the incidental process of sanctification, talk more about redemption, could talk more about the, the covenant concept. But when you put them all together, I was just trying to give an overview today. And I, I hope this makes sense. I hope this uh, may have brought a bit of uh, understanding to you and by the grace of God, the Spirit of God bring revelation to you. And, I, and so my purpose today is to understand the importance of knowing and being secure in your salvation and the redemption that you have, that you are redeemed, that you're secure in that, that, that you're not afraid and living in fear as a, as a child of God, living a fear of, of making a mistake and, 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 and going to hell. We should do everything possible in our life to abstain from sin, to, to, to get it out of our life, not to make those mistakes. It's not a license by any means to sin. But you should not live in fear or terror that, by, that maybe there's a mistake I don't know about or so on and so forth. You get the idea. Okay? But also, within that concept, that does not mean that because that, pro, that we, or rather that because we have not earned it, we can't lose our salvation. This does not mean that sanctification is not necessary. 
we still have the terms of the covenant to fulfill. And so, hopefully that makes sense. I really hope it does. And like I said, I am, I don't claim to be a theologian or a great scholar, but these are some concepts that have, um, I have been studying, praying about, thinking about, and I've heard some good teaching about. And so I wanted to deliver it to you today. So God bless you. I hope that you are blessed. I hope that you're having a revival where you are. People receiving the Holy Ghost. I pray that you're seeing great increase. And I pray that God has anointed you to do his work. Until next time, this has been Edifying the Body. I pray that his face shines upon you. That he gives you peace.